The science of rain. What makes it fall from the sky? What causes rain? It is necessary for the growth of plants, the survival of animals, and the maintenance of the functions of the human body. Water is a vital component of life and it is provided for us by the sky. Streams, rivers, and lakes are filled by rainwater. It possesses the capacity for life to proliferate. In the monsoon season, it may change a stream into white water rapids, transform a dry desert into an oasis, and bring life to the world's most hostile environments. How then do clouds grow to continue providing us with the vital water we require? In today's Could Be Anything channel episode, we'll learn the following. The science of rain. What makes it fall from the sky? The most fascinating and attractive weather phenomena may be clouds. Despite coming in a vast range of sizes and shapes, they are always formed of the same substance, water. The air everywhere around us is moist because it includes water vapor, even though we might not be aware of it. Despite being a gas, water vapor is still present even though you cannot see it. Water can exist in three different states, solid as ice, liquid as water, or gas, or a vapor. Vapor is invisible and has no scent. Though you can sense it. Think of a muggy, sweltering summer or a chilly, foggy winter day. These feelings are caused by water vapor. Millions of small water droplets would be visible floating in the air if you put steam or vapor under a microscope. Millions of small water droplets condense out of the air to produce liquid water, and this is the same mechanism that creates clouds. But why does airborne water condense and manifest itself as a cloud? Since warm air can store more water vapor than cool air, when warm air begins to cool, it can hold less vapor. There must be a place for the additional water vapor. Water forms when it condenses. Go outside and look up at a cloud to see this in action. Keep an eye on the cloud, especially its edges, while exercising patience. You'll notice that the edges alter, either increasing bigger or smaller. This is the process of cloud creation. More of those water droplets are condensing out of the air, which causes the cloud to increase. You can observe the droplets evaporating as they become smaller and transition from being visible liquid water to invisible water vapor. However, not every cloud is spewing rain. So, how does a cloud's creation turn into rain? The water that is condensing in the clouds must grow sufficiently heavy that it will descend to earth for rain to form. Otherwise, the small droplets will just hang there in the cloud like fog does. The droplets must develop into drops in order to become heavier, and in order to do so, they must expand and absorb more water. Some of the droplets will merge and grow as they collide with one another, while others will grow as additional water condenses out of the air into the droplet, growing until they are condensed and heavy enough to fall to the ground as rain. Alternatively, if it's extremely cold out, the small drops freeze and turn into snow, hail, or sleet. So there you have it. A cloud is what it sounds like, and rain is what it produces. But why does the air initially begin to cool? We already mentioned that chilling the air decreases its capacity to contain water and causes water droplets to form. The air must be cooled in order to produce clouds and produce rain. According to the majority of the scientific papers we consulted, there are three primary mechanisms by which this occurs. These are referred to as convectional rain, frontal rain, and relief rain. Let's examine how each of these functions. When air is forced to cool as it rises over a physical impediment, like a mountain range or large hills, relief rain, also known as orographic rain, is produced. Warm air rises over the obstacle, where it cools and condenses to produce clouds. 
Because the rain clouds form so quickly, relief rain is frequent in mountainous regions where it might result in more dramatic local rainfall patterns. There are times when a mountain's warm, bright side contrasts with its nearby, damp, rainy, opposite side. When two air masses, a warm and a cool air mass, collide, frontal rain forms. Because the heavier, cooler air mass weighs more than the lighter, warmer air, the lighter, warmer air rises above the heavier, cooler air mass. Warmer air begins to cool, condense, and form clouds as it rises above the colder air, which eventually results in rain. The skies are normally cloudy and gloomy where frontal rain is developing. Convectional rain is the last type. On a warm day, the sun warms the earth and warms the air above it, which causes it to warm and expand, causing it to rise. Since warm air can store more water than cool air, as we previously explained, it absorbs more water as it gets warmer. The atmosphere cools off as you ascend, around 1 degree Celsius for every 100 meters, so as the temperature climbs, it begins to fall again. Clouds start to develop when the air is at a height where the temperature forces the water vapor to start condensing. Cumulus clouds, also known as cumulonimbus clouds, are the result of this process, and they frequently produce very heavy rain along with thunder and lightning. When the air feels thick and we can tell a storm is coming at the end of a hot summer day, we experience convectional rain. So, that is how clouds are created. Clouds provide water that is necessary for the existence of plants, animals, and people while cooling the Earth's surface by reflecting sunlight. Have you ever seen really heavy rain, in which the water we require changes from a friend to an enemy? In the comment section below, describe the worst storm you've ever experienced. Check our other videos on the Could Be Anything channel as well. Thanks for watching, and, as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.